live. It's lighting. It's working. It's lighting. Hi everyone. Welcome to Wine Shots episode 2 of 2018. Of season 2. Season 2. And welcome to Melanie who's just logged in. And my great expectations and Sam's with and our us. Camera set up is dodgy. And so LVD Horst yes. and oh, there's got a few logging in. Hi guys. Nice to see you. Welcome to Wine Shots. We have a really exciting episode today. Dean Involving sliding cameras. Involving and sliding cameras. We are talking all about South African old vine Shannon. And I don't know, I think we probably have a lot of South Africans that are gonna be with us tonight, but old vines are all over the world. But old vines in South Africa are particularly special. They're a huge part of the heritage here. And we are gonna tell you a little bit about old vines. And we are going to be tasting this wine, Nuadam. Nuadam. And I'm not even Afrikaans, so that's probably not how you say it. <laughs> but it's for the um, people who don't know, I, I, I don't even know myself. I think it means new dam. That um, would make sense. So, like, like with French, if you say something literal in a different language, it sounds fancier. That's what this means, I think. And as a Canadian, I'm horrible at pronouncing anything um, outside of English, <laughs> unfortunately. Hello, Tim. And someone's laughing at us. <laughs> and we're getting lots of waves. Hi, guys. Welcome. What are you guys drinking tonight, if anything? Yes, if um, you're drinking, tell us. What are you drinking your wine in? Are you using stemless glasses? No. Are you using... Are your glasses even clean? Um, because we have these lovely uh, Gabriel glasses that were gifted to us. Dean and I are moving up in the world with wine shots. Yeah. We now have sponsored glasses, which is super awesome. I think I complained in the last wine shots about Katie's Le Creuset wine glasses. Yeah, with a fishbowl. So I'd wine. like to complain about my car. It needs replacing. If anyone wants to sponsor me a new car, that's, uh, that would be nice. That would be very kind of you. <laughs> that would be very kind of you. So these are the fancy Gabriel glasses. They're essentially, can we say, weightless glasses? Not yes, quite yeah. weightless, but they are very, very light. Hi from Italy, women in wine. Welcome. Yeah, very light. So you can drink basically anything from a Gabriel glass, so they say. You can have bubbles, red, white, dessert wines. It's like, yeah, it's a universal glass, yeah. I think. And it's, um, it's, I don't know, it, it makes anything you drink, I think, seem fancier. Yeah. Um, yeah, I like them. Yeah. And if you're in South Africa, you can buy them through Wine Cellar. They sell them a pack of two for, I think, it's about a thousand rand for two. <laughs> but we are going to tell you if it's worth it or not when we drink our wine from it. Okay. <laughs> I think it's worth it, but uh, I don't own any uh, myself. I'd, I'd like to. You own one. We have. We own fifty fifty. Have an undivided share. <laughs> when these were sent to me, I asked if I, if Dean would like me to drop off his at his house. <laughs> what did I say? You said that I. Um, I said. It's shared custody. I'll treat them like grandchildren. <laughs> I'll come and play with them at your house, but you're responsible for like kind of cleaning them and making sure they don't break. Taking care of them. <laughs> And I do drink them a lot, so thanks for that, Dean. Dean is opening the wine, but I think we should briefly talk about old vines in general. Anybody out there have old vines in your country? And what do they mean to you? I find that the whole old vines thing a fascinating um, thing because I think it, it lends itself to confusion with sort of old world. Um, and I think... Ironically, some of the oldest vines in the world are in the New World. Mm. Um, so that's interesting. Like yeah. um, old vines don't necessarily carry the same uh, respect as the old world does, um, and I don't know why. Yeah. And it's an interesting debate. I think that's currently going on in South Africa about whether old wine means anything at all to the quality of the wine. Um, well, we think it's a debate. I do. So, what a lot of people say though is the older the vine, 
the more quality the grapes because you're getting smaller yields on the older vine if it's pruned properly and you're getting more concentrated grapes. So more interesting sort of flavors and aromas and everything from an old vine. Fun fact, the oldest vine in South Africa is from 1771. It's still producing wine and in 2015, it produced 35 liters of wine. It's in Heritage Square in Cape Town. Hey, still in yes. No, no, Cape Town, the city. Cape Town, Cape Town. Like so the city center. You can sit, you can enjoy a glass of wine under this old vine. It's over 300 years like, Basically, I, I, I've never been there. But if I know my geography correctly, it's almost in the shadow of Table Mountain. It's ah. like so in the middle of Cape Town. I need to go. Um, Love from Canada. Hello, everyone in Canada that's watching. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, so there's this old vine and Signal Hill produced wine from this old vine in Cape Town. Mm. And uh, I believe it was sold on auction. Yeah. So that's some old stuff. So now. So this, let's talk about this one. This is the wine that we have tonight to taste. Um, it's an interesting wine. We'll get into more details. Um, it is the first wine in South Africa to be sort of officially certified as a heritage old vine which means that there's a independent body that goes and I suppose verifies your claim on your wine label that your vines are indeed old. The sort of, I don't want to say cutoff point, but the starting point for an old vine they say is 35 years of age. This one is from 19, this vineyard is, was planted in 1974. Um, so they've certified that age as, as correct, as authentic, as whatever. I don't know how old that is. Yeah. It's, 44? This one, yeah. Okay. <laughs> so that's, that's pretty old. Um, it's certainly not the oldest in South Africa. It's not the oldest Shenan. I forget what, I know what the oldest Shenan is. I just don't know how old it is yeah. uh, like off, offhand. Um, but this is, this is a pretty decent old one. It's, it's certainly well into the old vine territory if you're considering 35 to be. You have to be 35 to run for President of the United States, I think. Really? Yes. And so, you have, and you have to, to be 35, 35 to, to get the stamp. Vine, yeah. Um, in South Africa. I should show you guys. So this, am I right in saying, is the first wine to receive this stamp on it? I think it's the first one to be sold commercially bearing the stamp. This is so hard to like. Obviously, there's a. <laughs> there's a Can you guys see it? I'll move it closer. There we go. Um, yeah. <laughs> there. So this is the, I don't know if he's that clear. Yeah. This That's is the good. old vine projects sort of um, stamp of approval, if I can call it that. Hi, Silken Cube. Yes, so that is the certification. So maybe we should talk about the importance of why a producer would want to sort of sign up with, with this group. Because you become a member and what happens? So obviously you get the benefits of certification, you get to use their like fancy label sticker thing. Mm -hmm. um, but I think you basically get in exchange the benefit of their expertise because these old vineyards are temperamental, they are high maintenance, they are not necessarily uh, profitable depending on who you're selling your grapes to and things like that. So they would certainly guide and assist with um, their, their goal is to try and preserve this vineyard. Yeah. They understand the commercial reality of being a farmer and wanting to make money paying for your kids' university yes, or whatever. How much, how much would it cost? Go, go pay it's, Northern Voyage. I paid 428 Rand. Um, I, I think the price would vary. Uh, so it's about 400 to 450 Rand, depending on who you buy it from. Um, In dollars, it's about 40, 45 dollars. Canadian dollars. American dollars, a bit more. <laughs> yeah. Less. Euros, a bit less, probably. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, anyway, so, and, and I think the whole purpose also of, of it's called Old Vines. What is this group called? It's called it's the old vines Certified vineyards. Heritage Vineyards. <laughs> <laughs> is to also, you can go onto their website when I was having a look today, and you can. Um, they can organize tours for you. You can go actually to the various sites of their members and visit the old vines and go see the old vines, take pictures with them, tour, 
the areas. So it's, it's a great initiative, you know, and it's a huge part of South African wine culture is these old vines. So and we love to talk about terroir, and I mm. think it certainly falls part of that wider definition of terroir, where you basically, you know, you you take into account the fact that the same person, perhaps the same family, has been making it for many years. Yeah. Um, the the fact that these vines will have been around or in this one place for forty four years, in the instance of this one, certainly would add to that factor of a sense of place. Yeah. Um, you know, it's rooted and it has a you know in the literal sense in one spot for this period of time when did old vines sort of become a thing again in south africa would you say when when did people start going out to the swartland like when was eddie go out to the swart well his family's been there for a couple generations but yeah, yeah i don't know if they've when did the hype yeah. around old vines start? i think basically end of apartheid one of the big sort of companies in apartheid was the KWV. Mm -hmm. They controlled the entire sort of wine, not the, the grape trade, if, yeah. I can, if I can put it that way. Um, and so there was sort of a declassification and then you were no longer obliged to sell your grapes to the co-op um, and things like that. And I think because of that, there was a lot of like turbulence. And um, obviously then if you are a independent winemaker you then have almost this whole uh, resource of all these vineyards that were previously sort of all uh, funneled into the kwv mm. um, available to you and i think then you know you had over time i think it's basically because it's yeban sadi made Columella in 2000 mm -hmm. that's certainly i suppose a milestone in that whole yes um in, in the old vine story yeah um so but i mean that's a short period between 1994 and 2000 yeah where i think everyone i know the mother news were doing that oh, a whole variety of people but it's so it's basically since the new south africa people have been able to discover their heritage, discover these vineyards that were previously sort of blindly going into big vats of cooperatives. Yeah, um, great. And let's talk about this wine specifically before we taste it. So the winemaker, her name is? Krista von la Chevalerie. Chevalerie. <laughs> Again, a long name. Um, it's a French sounding name mixed with German. She is German mm. in, in heritage. Yes. Um, so it's more German than I make. Maybe yeah, than I'm making it sound. But and I, yeah, and we I I sent her a message quickly, and we had a, a brief chat, and she was telling me a bit more about her wine, and she said um, that when they when she returned to her family estate in 2005, that's when she started. Hey. That's why I'm looking here. Old vine. Yeah, so I, from what I understand, I've met her in person, I've chatted with her, and she's a very lovely person to chat with. Um, oh, she, like, taste the wine, please. We will taste the wine soon. <laughs> We're getting there, I promise. We We're like letting to it breathe. To it. Yeah. Um, We're those annoying people at the book club that <laughs> want the wine to breathe. Um, and actually want to talk about the book. Um, I think, so she, I, I know she studied overseas, I think she studied in Germany uh, winemaking. Um, so I think she would have come back home from sort of that period of studying in 2005 to her family's farm, um, which is quite a historic and it's been in the family for many generations in the Paderberg. And it's provided Swartland. grapes for other labels yes. and producers. And I think so sort of around 2005, you start getting the buildup of this hype, particularly with old vines, but uh, also the Swatland in general. Mm. Um, you've got, as I mentioned before, Yevon Saadi, the first vintages of the Mullen News on their own was about 2008. Um, and so that's sort of when she would have come back to be a farmer on this farm. And I think um, she certainly speaks of a camaraderie. And I think that is a big part of the marketing appeal of the Swatland. Yeah. So there's like a whole lot of like neighborly help and assistance. And there's this, this, this wave. Yeah, oh. and, and she even said to us that she doesn't have her own cellar, so she relied on neighbors and friends and sort of fellow winemakers for help. And I believe that's a beautiful thing about the Swartland is that everyone sort of always comes around, pitches in, helps each other. There's, there's not this um, sort of like huge competition that everyone helps mm -hmm. each other, and that's what makes the area so great, yes. so attractive. 
and there's some really amazing stuff coming out of there. Whole bunch pressed, naturally fermented, and is left to its own devices. After nine months, it's blended and bottled. That's what she says, straight from the horse's mouth. There's a tortoise, a little tortoise, a cute little tortoise on the label. And that comes from, she says, when it was <laughs> the tortoises on the label came walking down the ridge to the house one day when we were pitching the design. So they saw a tortoise and thought, let's put it on the label. It's kind of cute. It is, and those t I've seen those tortoises, not these, those ones on her farm in particular, mm. but the ones on the swap farm, they are quite like small ones. They're not those that David Attenborough, ones that are older than, than us tortoises. Yeah. Um, yeah. Anyone else out there drinking wine and what are you drinking? I see Candace joined us and I know she was going to pour herself a glass. So Candace, what are you drinking? Are you drinking old wine, Shannon? Um, talk to us, guys, if you have any questions. I've got my computer right here, I can see, and we can answer and we can chat. So send us a message. I think we should taste this wine. We should, yeah. Cheers. Cheers. Well, let's talk about the color, just to annoy people even more. Pale lemon. It's Definitely, but it's got sort of a, maybe it's our lighting, but it does sort of seem almost like luminous. Not in a, in a green sense, but it's, it's I, I find it quite attractive, this color. It's like, the wine quarterback says it's 10.45 in Kelowna, which is my hometown, so he's drinking coffee. 10.45 a.m. Mm. Okay. So, but that's okay, you can have wine at 10.45. Okay, I'd recommend a Newton Johnson Chardonnay. Yeah, or even a bubbly. <laughs> that's fine, bubbly's okay at any time of the day. <laughs> But enjoy your coffee. Diabolica. Who's that? It's Diabolica. Oh, I think that's the kind. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, thumbs up. <laughs> awesome. Okay, so. Me and the smell it. So I pick up on you. There's obviously like a. You haven't cheated. You haven't had this. No, yet. I've never had this before. This is, this is, what is this? This is raw and unedited. Um, Diabolica white. Oh, okay. Talking about the color. It's it's got so like a typical swat dungeon and has a, like a sort of a dustiness to it. So it's like mm. a gravel road. Mm. I always I so I always say I always joke as though I make this comment all the time, but um, that thin film of dust that forms on your car when you drive down a gravel road. Yes. Right. Yes. That's the sort of dustiness yeah. that I'm talking about. Yeah. Um, my joke is always that that's terroir by truck because if you have trucks driving past your vineyard, they'll put that dust on your grapes. Then that's good. Obviously, terroir by truck is a uh, <laughs> awesome. a pejorative term that, we, that we, we use in South Africa. I but, like it. I like it. Um, and a lot of fruit on the nose, some apricots and some nice peaches. Yes, a little bit of citrus. Um, it's a bit cottony, and I smell a bit of cotton. If you can smell like a sort of a fresh sort of cotton linen sort of. Okay, not we're walking through a plantation kind of thing. I could be walking uh, through a plantation. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, Joseph's with us, the one poet himself. Hi, Joseph. Joseph, cheers. And Claire's drinking Break a Leg from Lucas Van Loggenberg. Nice choice. That's nice choice. The... Break a Leg is the rose, I think. Break a Leg. I haven't had I think it. It is, but. Is it the rose, Claire? We'll run my finger down it next time and give it a try. Mmm, dust. I'm getting a smoky thing, well I'm not sure if it's because the back door's coming, open. I think it's coming from the outside. Okay, so the wine is not smoky, the outside is smoky. No, no, don't worry about it. I think someone's um, burning some. The wine quarterback says he's in the uh, tasting dust. <laughs> That's awesome. Okay. Wow. Wait, did you sip? I did sip. Very mineral. Again, Great. the fruits Great. come straight through again. Mm -hmm. There's a really nice texture to the wine. There is, yeah. Like and a, there's a driving acidity, I'd say, you know, something similar to like a Riesling mm. or um, it's, 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 it's sort of, you know, when it makes your cheeks, not your yeah. cheeks, your jaw muscles like tense up a bit um, in a positive sense. Yeah. Um, sort of like eating vitamin C pills or tablets or. Joseph says he's watching her work and cheers and he's going to see me on Wednesday. I finally get to meet Joseph. Where are you meeting him? I think. Are you in Cape Town? No, he's, he's coming to Joburg for 
Joseph's having a movie filmed about him and the Zim songs. So we're going to meet up cool. and have a glass of wine. That's going to be awesome. Okay. Welcome to everybody who's joining us. Cheery from the Dolomites. Paul and Joe Hubert. Cheery from the Dolomites. What is Cherry from the Dolomites? I don't know. Sometimes I get confused. I'm also confused. <laughs> I'm about confused. What that means. Um, but cheers from the Dolomites. Yeah, or the Granites, as this wine is. Maybe, maybe, yeah. Mm, okay, I'm trying to focus now. It's quite a delicate wine. It's very gentle. Um, I don't. What well, you? I do pick up a, a texture, and there is a sort of a, a, a dense flavor weight it's to very, the wine. But, but it's, it's also quite buttery. There's like almost a slight sort of oiliness, butteriness that's going over my tongue. It's like also light at the same time. So there's just a very subtle mm. sort of creamy. I would assume maybe it's from Mallow, that sort of <clears throat> creamy texture to it. A lot of stone fruit for me. Yeah, so like tons of stone fruit. Peaches, apricots, what other stone fruits do you get? Um, some pineapple. Mm. Um, perhaps that's a better way of trying to describe that. A bit, acidity. A bit of a tropical note um, to it. Yeah. Definitely. There's not a major sort of herbal characteristic to it, or mm. like a thatchy characteristic, which you sometimes get with Swatland Shen. Yeah. Um, it's also not whilst there, whilst it's, it's not all fruit. So whilst there's a lot of fruit characteristics that that, that we pick up, it's yeah. not, it's not as 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 fat, if I can put it that yes, way, as yeah. like a Stella Yeah. Um, this is much like leaner. Candace says, spot on, Katie, loving the minerality in the shenan. Candace, are you also drinking the same? That's awesome. Fantastic. Please share more of your notes with us. And thumbs up from Theodora. It is a 2017, I think, yeah, so it's fairly young. <clears throat> yeah. Um, I've, I've, it's not as salty as other you know, I associate minerality with like a saltiness or sort mm. of, you know, certainly that dusty characteristic that I was talking about yes. is in the mineral spectrum. Mm. Um, but it's not as salty as, you know, with a, we, 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 I've described Shannon's as like tequilas before. Mm. I'm not getting that here. Um, so it's much more of sort of a, like a watered down peach juice with other uh, the characteristics. The squeeze of lemon. Yeah, there is a bit of a lemon juice, juice sort of yeah. <clears throat> lemon, um, fresh squeezed lemon juice, maybe even a bit of lime juice on it. It's very fruity. It's very delicate. Mm. It's gentle. I like the texture on it. Mm. I think it's light and it's it's fun. I think it's nice. I think it's very drinkable. I think mm. if you weren't paying attention to it, um, I think anyone could drink this wine without objection or, or anything like that mm. but I think if someone's wanting to pay attention to the wine or, or is more serious about wine there's lots of detail. There's pink like, lemonade in here and pink grapefruit. Yes, yes. Pink grapefruit is now screaming at me. Yeah. Yeah. It's like yeah, pink lemonade and sort of that. It's like it, it just feels like I'm tasting a bit of summer. Yes. <laughs> and I think that's the that was the description I was trying to have of the color. It mm. is like that golden summer light that you get maybe in the morning. Yeah. Um, like the day is, is about to go from being fresh and crisp to obscenely hot. Yeah. It's like that sort of light that I'm talking about. Sorry, I'm horrible at pouring. <laughs> do they not song. teach you how to pour wine when you do W set level four? Not content? a song. Hashtag not a song. That's <laughs> <laughs> all. Oh, aperitivo, light wine, Polinder Hubert says. Yeah, it's very light, very fresh. Now I said pink grapefruit, that's all I'm getting. It's um it's lovely. And I think because it is so young, we're getting all these fruits. And I think five years from now it would be really interesting to mm. open a 2017 because you'd probably get a lot more of sort of that more age shenan yes. characteristics to it, a bit more of knit knit wool and honey, um, and, honey and maybe a bit of nuttiness. Beeswax but, yeah. and all those sort of lovely things that come from an age shenan. 
South Africans love drinking their wine young. In fact, you know, as these cool producers come out with these wines, everyone buys them and everyone's so desperate to taste them and off they go and there's yeah. none left. So, you know, it's, uh, I'm busy writing an article on that right now, but it's, it's, I always try and when I find a producer that I love, that's not getting too many, that's not producing many bottles. If I really love it, I like to buy myself two bottles. I like to drink one, drink it young. And then I make a promise to myself that one's going in the fridge, in the cellar for at least five years. At so. least five. That's interesting. <laughs> no, no, just because I've, uh, there's always concerns, at least in, from my point of view, with mm -hmm. South African wines with, that are corked, or that are sealed with cork. Yeah. Not corked, but sealed with cork. Yes. That we end up with... Mm. We're not exactly a huge winemaking market, mm. and we end up with poor quality cork. Mm. Um, and I always worry, like you, you know, you sort of you put this baby wine away, and you uh, with, with great expectations. Yeah. And um, sometimes it's better to maybe drink it young because if if, if it's tainted. But you'll always, I if I buy two you bottles, you'll always have the memory of the young one, and then you're just <laughs> gonna gamble with the second one. Um, yeah. And I always also get really excited about sort of new producers from the Swatland and all these all these cool people doing these amazing things because they come out with these wines, there's not that many, and I'm always interested to see where their careers are going to sort of go. Yes. You know, it could be the next Ibn Saudi or that kind of story. Now imagine having his 2001 in your fridge, right? That's from his first. So I also love sort of gambling on these young guns, they like to call them, putting it away and uh, just seeing what happens with their careers. Yeah. Yeah, which is quite nice. Hello, we're getting waves. Oh, Krista's with us, the winemaker Hi, herself. Krista. Krista, you're late. <laughs> Jokes. We're, we're enjoying really enjoying your wine. Your wine. Yeah. It's, um, I don't know if I'm reading into this, this is a question, but I know that I think that, that, that Krista is what well, makes two bubblies, made those before she made me. Okay. Um, I wonder to what extent that winemaking has influenced the making of this wine. Um, again, with the acidity, um, mm. I find it very fresh, very, um, so, you know, and, and obviously when we make sparkling wines, we pick. Do you remember when we went, you and I went Lude. to the Lude yeah. and we were trying the sort of the, the, the base, base wine, wine yeah. and, it, and it gives you that, that, that it's, it's got so much sort of sugar, it's raw sugar in it. I think it's the acid. It's the acid. It, it's almost like, feels like it's eating your teeth. I'm not saying that about this wine, but there is definitely that sort of, I get what you're saying, that sort of bubbly sort of base wine yes. taste. And I think that's a good question for Krista. Because as I understand it again, Krista, um, this Krista is the same says, thing imagine again. having all those guys as your neighbors. Exactly. Yeah, that would be amazing. And, and I think Krista brides with them every Sunday or something like that. Not every Sunday. Regularly. I'm so jealous. Can we come um, hang out with you? But because I think if I, if I this is my question the the Philia Shannon uh, MCC mm -hmm. is also from this vineyard, I think. Yeah. So it would just be interesting to sort of you know find out you know are there is, is there a block that's devoted to the to the sparkling wine that's picked earlier? Then there's another portion that goes to. Uh, the mullein use another portion that goes to the Alex, yeah, then good Krista question. gets to have her pick of what's left over, um, and sort of the, you know, the different picking times. Yeah, she um, says, guess the bubbles taught me something, but it's natural tinge. Natural tinge. Like the hue, the tinge, the color? Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> and I think that's a, that's a good question you're asking her about sort of, how do your blocks in your vineyard work and where do yeah. they go and sort of um, what made you decide that these were your Shannon grapes and not your neighbors were they sort of I don't know and are these friendly neighbors of yours happy that you're now competing with them um, I'm certainly happy as a, as a wine drinker yeah. to have another sort of expression it's almost like you know you can think of Burgundy where you've got literally rows of mm. famous vineyards owned by different people, different families, mm. um, and all of them are like, you know, you can think of your Montrachets or your, all the different, the Bata Montrachet and all yeah. of those things. Um, everyone's sort of you referencing the same vineyard on their, 
blind label, but everyone's trying to express it differently because they have their own rows or whatever. Yeah. I'm getting that sort of idea about this wine. Yeah. Um, I hope that's a fair comparison. Um, 2017 saw one barrel. One barrel is about a thousand bottles. I yeah, think. rest was wine. Literally smooth accent there. Thanks, Stephen. It's obviously talking about my accent. My Obviously. Canadian, my Canadian smooth accent because it's not so my, um, gentle. <laughs> South African thing from the. Oh, uh, Kevin says the fila is divine. Okay, they're talking about the fila. Is that another wine she produces? That's the, that's the sparkling wine made uh -huh. from Shannon. Okay. Krista says they have 10 vineyards, each its own buyer. Okay. And Bot River Wines is with us. That's awesome. Welcome, guys. I love all the stuff at Bot River. Okay, so 10 vineyards, each with some bar. I feel like I'm licking a brick. In terms of the texture <laughs> or in terms no, of... No, in terms of a bit of a taste, so a, a bit of a gravelly taste. I know you said you weren't really getting it so much, but as the wine's opening up, I'm getting a lot more sort of stone and almost like a gravelly sort of... And I'm getting that flavor. saltiness that I was talking about. Earlier. That you weren't getting. That I wasn't getting, yeah. So sort of the fruit maybe has um, blown off or dissipated a little bit. Yeah, and I'm starting to get the secondary sort of yeah. flavors now, which is really cool. Um, it's become much more savory. So it went from being, um, you, you know, you, you sort of said pink lemonade, grapefruit, mm. sort of those primary fruits, to now much more um, savory, salty, uh, you said uh, gravelly. Brick. <laughs> brick. <laughs> Red brick? Or concrete blocks. Red brick. <laughs> Katie's husband is a construction company person, owner, yes. man. Yeah, so, the, so, so I often lick bricks. She has bricks. a fondness for bricks. <laughs> I often just lick from it as well. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Um, even on the nose, this one's opening up. Uh, X, XO Incredible wants to know if it's oaked. I don't think so, no. Oh, she left it for nine months, but it wasn't in barrel. No, it, it might have been barrel, but all barrels. Mm. Um, and from what I understand, there's certainly no concrete or... It's probably even like plastic vats. You know, you like think of these plastic drums. Ask Asker. Krista, what did you age your... What did you raise your wine in? Six-year-old barrels. Okay. There we go. Thank you. It's so nice to have the wine maker with us, eh? You guys can also just ask Krista questions directly on here and she'll probably answer you. Yes. And, and we'll just keep the, picking the, up the, things. Her handle is Krista Chev, uh, for those who, who, who want to know. Um, so this is what I love about wine, and in particular I'm enjoying about this wine, mm -hmm. is how it evolves in the glass once you open the bottle. Mm -hmm. you know, uh, I wouldn't go as far as to say each sip is different, but yeah. certainly each pour. Um, brings out new flavors and characteristics. Absolutely. The first glass we were just getting fruit, 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 and now there's a lot more secondary, secondary sort of characteristics coming out, even on the nose. And you said, you know, with a bit of age, you could, we'd probably see things like honey, but I'm almost picking up a slight honey yes, no. smell on yes. it now that the wine's warming. So I don't know if you guys have ever tried that. You open your wine, write down your notes and what you get right when you have it. Leave it for about 10, 15 minutes. Try it again and see how it changes. So oxygen is an amazing thing. Yes. Uh, it counteracts with the wine immediately and changes it. Um, and most young wines, uh, they say you should allow it to breathe. So mm. give it some time to open up to breathe. If I can help myself, I try to even leave a wine open overnight. You know, I'll, I'll drink it. I'll drink half of it. Obviously not on my own. Krista wine. says, let's eat, we need food. <laughs> we do need food. I think this would be a great food wine again because of that. Sorry, I don't feed well. Dean when he comes over. No, I feed myself. I'm, uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm not so dependent. Um, the last time I saw Krista was at her, at the sparkling wine tasting. Mm, I was supposed to go to that. So the time before, we had a braai and we only ate at like 10 o'clock. Oh really? After several wines, so nice. um, maybe she's maybe she's looking after me. Yeah. At least I feel it that way. <laughs> um, so it would be interesting as well to sort of maybe compare. Uh, again, I'm making I'm I'm making speculative stroke educated guesses that the Malinu Granite Shannon is also you know 
from this farm mm -hmm. and a significant component of cartology. Mm -hmm. Krista can correct me if I'm wrong or she can keep it a mysterious secret yeah. if, if she wants to. But it would, it would be great to try those wines against each other. Because mm. um, I think this, this, the price of this wine is about the same as the Granite Shannon. Okay. Um, it's slightly cheaper than Cartology. Obviously, the Cartology is a blend, so that's not 100% a fair comparison. But um, yeah, that's what's exciting me about this wine, as mm. I said before, is like there's different expressions of sort of the same terroir yeah. of different people. Yeah. Um, yeah. Very cool. Nice. And uh, since we're drinking out of our fancy new Gabriel glasses, how how do you feel the wine's going with such a light sort of carefree glass? There's a lot of space in the glass for swirling. Um, there's a lovely tapered edge for sniffing. Um, and I just like the I just like how carefree these glasses are. They're so light and you can swirl them nicely. They take a bit of getting used to it first because they're almost so light you can swim them out of your hands. Exactly, but, yeah. Um, I don't know, I when someone asked me to describe what it's like drinking out of a Gabriel glass, I said it's like drinking a wine naked. Yes, <laughs> well, I would agree with that. I would say that obviously the the thing that separates you from the wine yeah. is the glass in a sense. Yeah. And you almost don't notice the glass when you are drinking a wine from it. And yes. so because of that, um, it is almost naked. Yeah, you know, it's, it's like I have these big fish bowls of, of red wine glasses and that's like, you know, it gets in your way and it's, a, it's very much a part of the wine drinking experience. Whereas I think the Gabriel glass just sort of allows the wine to be itself. Mm. Simple, unassuming. Candace says, what do we think about decanting white wine? Personally, she's a fan. I'm a big fan of decanting Young wine. Young wine. Mm. Uh, it is it is the poor man's cellar, as I like to call it. Yeah. Because you can sort of um, manipulate. Yeah, you, don't, you you know what what you really should be doing is leaving that wine, as Katie said, for five years and drinking it later. But mm. when you get a bit impatient, then you sort of want to at least get maybe a snapshot of the potential of the wine. Yeah. Decanting does um, allow you to to experience that. Yeah. 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 So I think absolutely like decanting is not just reserved for red wine. I think it's important to do with young wine. Um, the don't older decant. the wine, the older the wine, don't decant it because they're so fragile. They're so fragile yeah. when that oxygen hits, you're gonna lose so much. So that's maybe when you get the core of it. <laughs> <laughs> hey, yeah, exactly. for the big spenders, I keep asking for a core of it for. Christmas and my birthday and it doesn't seem to come so if ask Jason's your, listening ask your, ask, I, I don't want to disparage if Corbin's you, listening but, but Katie accepts payment in Corbin <laughs> <laughs> or at the very least once she gets one she'll accept payment in the little, little CO2 capsules um, Krista says she did decant this in the early release stage and it made a difference yeah. yeah, it certainly made a difference now. Now, yeah. also again, I'm getting like a herbal note, mm. like that sort of, we, we described citrus, I'm getting more of the pith. So it's getting like this pleasant bitterness as well about it. Yeah. Um, you know, you know, maybe like a, like, like the, the game, when I say pleasant bitterness, you described grapefruit earlier, I would agree with that, gin, those sorts of things. Um, it's very acidic, so it's got a really, um, a really high acidity to it. It's light bodied. Uh, what else are we going to say? I think it's quite an intense wine on the palate. I think that like we are expressing so many different notes yes. from herbal to fruit to bricks. So there's a lot going on. So I think it's a, it's a nice, complex, intense wine. Um, yeah, dense, yet at the same time refreshing. Mm. It's got it, it very detailed yeah. as well. So there's lots of sort of little strands of and whiffs, whiffs and... Yeah. Of different aromas and flavors. Um, and what what would you guess the alcohol is on this? Did you look I already? Looked, okay, so, yeah. so it's thirteen percent alcohol, so it is on the higher side for a white, I'd say, or average. Yeah. Not average. Um, average, average, average low for South Africa, I would say. When are we visiting Krista? Krista, we want to come visit you tomorrow. If that's okay. Want to go? What in Jobo? Are you? Or... We would love to come to the Swartland and come see you. Yeah. I mean, next time I'm in Cape Town, I will message you and I will see if you still remember this invitation. Um, but I would love to come and visit. 
Uh, and Bubbles Highland is with us. She's a merchant in, in Cape Town. She says her feed is broken, but she's on red wine tonight and enjoy the tasting. Thanks. We are very much enjoying the tasting. Um, Chris, this is obviously the farm. So we just okay. got invited to the swatter. Okay. We're going to go. We're coming to see you. <laughs> for, the, for the bride, it's crying on the back table. <laughs> It's, it, so 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 the the back label says pairs well with friends in any weather or in any stoop. And Krista says she's in town. I know. As Dean came over, we looked at each other and we we're like, "Why isn't Krista here with us?" <laughs> Tasting it's the silliest thing because we knew you were in Joburg, so you should have actually come with us. So next time, you must come over and bring bubbles. Or next time we'll come over to you. Yeah, or we'll just come to you. Wh whichever. Definitely, um, and I hope you're enjoying Joburg. And you've had lots of long, full baths, um, <laughs> because that's what Cape Town people do. I had my mother-in-law visiting, and she enjoyed her baths. Is she just like I'm going for a bath? Yeah. Oh, shame. Yeah. They're almost the Cape Townians at the moment are sort of like refugees. Um, they come over to your house. They're like a little bit unkempt, and you sort of have to have to bath them and give them a cup of tea before they're social. I um, think we're I think we're on to something because now we're getting invites to Norway. So I think maybe you sponsored trips. Dean and I are, are very, very willing to travel. Who invited <laughs> us to Norway? Because I would love to come to Norway. Jan, um, Jan invited us. Cool, new corners here. Yeah, yes. yeah, awesome. Yeah, so we do travel. You know, if you if you want us to come to a wine shops in your country, we, we're happy to come. <laughs> and with global warming, one day Nor Norway might be the... Wine making hotbed of the world. Exactly. Um, so exactly. We could, we could pioneer that industry. So back to the wine. It's got you know a decent amount of alcohol in it. It's got high acidity. How um, would you compare it to because of the acidity uh, to like a Vouvray or a Loire Chenin, um, which again acidity does sort of uh, typify those wines, mm. um, which at times can be on the sweeter side, and that acidity balances everything. Yeah. Out. Um, you're the level four bonus Yeah, but I haven't done my unit three yet. I'm doing <laughs> spirits at the moment. I would say I'm that it is... tasting a thingy, but it's bloody spirits. The acidity reminds me of like a, a Vouvray. The wine is very dry. It's certainly not... Krista's going to Brian leaving us. Okay, cheers, Bye, Krista. Krista. Thanks for your help and delicious. We love it. And if your guests can get a bottle of your wine at the bra, I'm sure it will be a treat. Yeah, absolutely. Um, Thank you for joining us. It was awesome. We're just going to keep talking. What were we talking about? We were talking about this wine compared to Shannon from the Loire. Oh, and I said Which again is an overgeneralization because there are such sort of different expressions of it. Even if you talk of a Vouvray, you could have a dry one, you could have a not dry one. Vintages vary, all of those different mm. things. Um, I find the acidity to to be reminiscent of that, but in terms of the flavors, it's very much South African shape, yeah. um, which I like. And it is, I mean, this is this is warm country Shenan. So this mm. is Shenan from a place that is not cool, like the Loire. Yeah. So it is a very generous wine, as you get from sort of New World or South African wines. Mm. Um, yet at the same time, it is, um, you know, these are descriptions we've used before, delicate. Um, quite light yeah. uh, bodied, um, so a very, very, very interesting wine. And I think, I think it will see its five years nicely, so mm. if I do my two bottle trick, get two more bottles, put one away, I there think are it lots, well, beautifully lots. five years from now. Krista said that they made one barrel. Hi, Rach, Rach joined us and gave us a wave. How was this? Yeah. Awesome. What were you saying? I was basically going to say, there are, I, I, I bought this from Norman Goodfellows mm. in Lobo. There were quite a few bottles left nice. for anyone who's in Jogo who's interested. Um, obviously, I say obviously, but perhaps the best person to ask where to get the wine is Krista herself. Yeah. Um, I think wine concepts, not wine concepts, wine menu. Okay, yeah. No, Jogo Coraline was it. saying she has it. And she also said she tried it and is very interested to hear what we think. Yes. Because her jury's out. So. Her jury's out. I don't know what that means. Yeah, I know. 
Damn it, she's does mysterious. it mean she has an opinion, or does it mean she's not yet ready to express her opinion? Mm, she wants to see what we think first. Mm. So I like it. Um, it's it is very it's it's not the same as like a Skirthberg. Yeah. Uh, by that I'm not talking exclusively there about like Irvin Sadi's mm. one, but the botanical one. The Alates also make a single vineyard wine from the yeah. Skirthberg. Um, those wines I find to be much more sort of. Um, Intense. Yeah, richer and mm. sort of fatter, yes. if I can if I can describe it that way. This yeah. is this is a much leaner wine. Yeah. Um, and I like that about it. I try I try to describe it as maybe like a dry Riesling. Yeah, or it's um, it's it's very tame. So it's very tame, it's very drinkable. I think um a lot of you, you please a lot of people serving this wine, you know, people with all sorts of different preferences and palettes would enjoy this wine light refreshing but also got a lot of complexity to it um it's and like the shabby of shimmins that's perfect get, i'm it's saying now that i think of that there's green apple on this one yeah there is um well, we said lime already but it does have a sort of shabby sort of characteristic yeah, yeah that yeah. that gentle minerality that sort of like delicateness uh, Candace says you can get it from Riverside Liquors as well. Can you? Your okay. I was there, yesterday. I was there today. What did I buy there today? Oh, I bought something different. I hope my WhatsApps don't come through on it. No, they no. wouldn't. <laughs> from the busy B class. <laughs> <laughs> but there we go. We've yeah. gone from being pretentious to describing this wine in Burgundian terms. Um, you know, in terms of sort of the... the Oh, demarcation of different vineyards um, and we've ended on Chablis so uh, the golden thread throughout this thing at least when I was it. it usually takes Dean and I at least an hour to conclude about a wine yes and we've been going for 45 minutes nice so we're getting <laughs> faster um, we're getting faster and it wouldn't be an episode of wine shots without a shot of wine so I'm kind of glad Krista logged up so she, she won't see us shooting her wine in a shot glass but cheers, cheers everybody I keep looking there and I should be looking there. <laughs> Delicious. You just drank your wine shot like a... Um, like a shot? No, like like a whiskey or something. Right? Well, this like, is a Lafroig glass. This is, how you, this is how you do a wine shot. <laughs> That's how you do a wine shot. Okay. I think you should do another one. I think just... I should do another one for practice. Yeah. Um, Dean, Dean doesn't do enough shots in his life. No. The only time I even hang out with Katie is when she invites me to do wine shots. <laughs> That's not true. <laughs> We're trying to get you to go to tastings with me. I'm trying. There. Okay. Cheers. You can do better Probably. this time. Okay. This is not how I like to drink wine. <laughs> I know, but... Um. I like to save them, but that was also delicious. But it's called wine shots. Did you pick up anything? We didn't describe the long lingering finish of this wine. Okay. It is a long lingering finish. Yes. Um, it it ends savory, salty. Um, grapefruity. It's like a grapefruit rind. Yes. Mm. I said pith because I'm pretentious. Oh my heavens. But it's the same one. <sighs> um, it's a zesty, vibrant, bright wine. It's the Chablis of Shannon. There we go. The Chablis of Shannon. Hashtag Chablis of Shannon. The Shannon of Chablis. Uh, yeah. Thanks for joining us, guys. That was super fun. And Katie's bored with me now. No, um, I'm not bored. We but, can keep uh, going. <laughs> no, no. We're trying to be shorter, sharper um, in, our, in our wine shots videos. So. But do you miss us wearing costumes? When did we, uh, when Last year we wore costumes twice. Well, the blue wine. The blue one and we wore flowers once. <laughs> For which wine was that? That was Blumco. Was the that was the very <laughs> first wine, the wine that started it all. Um, Cheers, guys! Thanks for joining us. Cheers. Please say goodbye. I will say goodbye. I will say. I'll try to point the label back at the camera there. Am I getting it? Yep. <laughs> Cheers. Hold on. Bye. Show them all your notes, Katie. There you go. I have notes. Yeah. <laughs>